So our speaker today is curriculum lead for SANS Events of Operations, Stephen Sims. If you don't know or probably have heard, he's uh, written several SANS courses, including our most advanced course, SEX uh, 760, Advanced Exploit Development. He's also curriculum lead for SANS Cyber Defense Essentials, as well as director for our new Purple Team Operations Graduate Program with SANS Technology Institute. He's got a full plate. So <laughs> without further ado, here's uh, Stephen to speak about our uh, update to offensive operations. Great, thanks, Randall, appreciate it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started here. First off, thank you so much for joining. I really do appreciate it. Um, we are giving away one free course at the end, which I'm assuming why this webcast is popular, but I'll just pretend it's because you really wanna hear about the changes uh, that we're making here. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So I first wanna introduce kind of the reasoning as to why we are making this change or why we've made this change and then talk about some of the new courses that we have coming out and then one little kind of surprise note and then we'll give away the free course towards the end there i'm happy to answer questions i probably won't take a look at the questions i'll let randall um, tell me if there are any as we get on later and, and he can ask me um, publicly so i don't get lost because i can imagine they could be queuing up and i lose my place so I, um, I'm also, I know there's only one free course to give away. I wish there was a bunch, but um, I'm also gonna give, give away a few copies of Gray Hat Hacking, which I'm one of the authors of. We actually are starting the sixth edition. We're gonna be writing that as of January, 2021. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'll figure out a way on Twitter or something to give away a few copies too. So why change the curriculum name? This is a big deal. It might not sound like a big deal, but it really is when you go into taking a, a brand and something that's been around for many years and, and thoughtfully put in the time required to make a change as significant to us and to the community as something like the curriculum name. So I wanna go through three primary areas. We're gonna focus on, of course, the, the white font area first. On the bottom right there, that's our new logo. So i um, really excited about that. We've got this great graphic artist, Shane Rice, who uh, makes wonderful things that we put on our shirts and our coins and things like that. So the first reason, and I'm gonna break this into a couple parts, is, is accuracy. So Ed Scotus started the curriculum back in, I think 2007 or 2008, and did an amazing job, of course, like everything Ed does, and uh, wrote the 560 course, which was like the first network pen testing course, I believe that SANS offered. Prior to that, he had written 504. And it just seemed to make sense that enough courses were coming out. We needed our own digital forensics and incident response curriculum. We needed our own offensive oriented curriculum. We needed cyber defense and some other ones as well. We've got a cloud curriculum now. And so at the time, penetration testing was, was a great name uh, for it. And I'm gonna show you a slide here in a moment that shows kind of where we, where we were at and where we are today since the two years I've taken over as the curriculum lead for pen tests now offensive operations. Uh, the main thing though is penetration testing is, is just one subset or sub curriculum underneath the overall offensive umbrella. And, and names are hard to come up with. And believe me, we went through a ton of back and forth with people. Uh, what does this mean from the military perspective and the defense perspective or the intelligence community? And what does it mean for the commercial sector, all the different verticals? And we talked to a lot of different people, uh, again, very thoughtful. And, and, and we, we came to an agreement on this name. So we kind of crowdsourced it a bit, which isn't always a good idea. As you can imagine, you get a lot of um, interesting feedback, but uh, we, we, we settled on this one. And we've grown from what was 14 courses with some of those being retired as well to over 23 courses now. And there's also a few more that are in proposal form I'll talk about briefly uh, to show you how much this has expanded. So what was a name that made sense, penetration testing, is now just a piece. And I'll again explain to you the reasons why this is important. So that bottom one there, the bottom bullet under accuracy, I'm gonna focus on that one specifically when we get there. So let's hold off. Now this is the pen test curriculum when I took it over a couple of years ago and um, all these courses, most of them anyway, are still here, but you can see some changes. We moved the Python course, which started off as Python for penetration testers over to the cyber defense curriculum. Actually, I'll get my pointer here. So this course here, 573, that one started out as Python for pen testers, but now it's more of like a course from which all 
different areas of study can, can benefit from, uh, such as cyber defense and development and forensics and everything else. So that one's with the cyber defense. And um, the Purple Team course 599 that uh, Eric Van Bugena, uh, Eric Van Bugena and I wrote a couple of years ago, that one's moved over into pen, the overall offensive um, operations umbrella. So my point being with this slide is this is what pen test was. And there's even a couple in here that might not necessarily make sense under pen testing. For example, 760 down here in the bottom left, that's an advanced exploit development course. Does that make sense for uh, the pen testing realm? So this is what I want to go through. This is what it was. And then we're going to get here in a moment to what it looks like today and going forward. So back onto accuracy again, I wanted to call out this specific bullet here. One of the big drivers, aside from a name that makes sense, is to help organizations to consider all potential threat vectors. And we're not going to talk about malware analysis because that falls under the DFIR curriculum, but that's, of course, a threat vector as well. But I want, I want it to be where we cover every possible threat across or attack vector across the entire threat landscape um, from an offensive perspective. And it gets down to the bottom one there, but really it's making sure that there are no gaps. Why? Because I want organizations to be able to use the way we've categorized things as a tool to be able to look at how they're currently doing things and where what other organizations are doing. So I'll just jump to the slide here. This one was put together by people that actually know how to do graphic art better than I do, even though I put the slide deck together. Um, and you can see we've grouped things together in these different buckets, and some of them are sub-curricula. Over on the left, I'll just get the pointer out again here. In the left, you've got these three categories that are penetration testing, and we focus one bucket on network penetration testing, which may cross into other spaces as well, but the, the primary focus is on the network, which could include hosts and such. And then we've got the web and cloud here. SEC 588 is a new course from Moses Frost on cloud penetration testing. So there's enough of an interest there. There's enough topic area where that truly is something more specialized. Um, you may know web app pen testing, you may know network pen testing, but cloud pen testing requires a lot of additional knowledge about the technology um, and the rules and such in those environments. So it makes sense to have a web and cloud section. We've also got a newer course that just had its second beta which is the bug bounty course from Hassan Al Harari, who has an amazing amount of experience in disclosing and doing coordinated responsible disclosure with various bug bounty programs and, and huge companies. So what better person to author a course on bug bounties and responsible uh, disclosure than from someone who actually does this for a living. And then we've got more of a specialized bucket here. And some of these, again, we may move things around um, when it makes sense, but you can see some Courses that have been here for some time, like the wireless course 617 and Metasploit. Uh, the social engineering one's been offline for a little bit, but it's coming back online as of, I believe, January or February. We've got the authorship uh, team working on that. The mobile device security course is still there as it was before, but that's a bit more specialized. And then 554 is a, a new course. I'm really excited about that one. I, I guess a lot because it's a personal interest and it's fun, but that's on on blockchain implementations and smart contract security. So how do you go about pen testing that? And a friend of mine, Steve Barbel, uh, wrote that one in, in record time and it's amazing quality. And we just did a presentation on that a couple of weeks ago. You might wanna go check out to see if it's something of, of interest there, but just really cool stuff. We've got Larry Pesci and James, James Libidal working on SEC 556, which is, I've been waiting for this one. It's IoT penetration testing. And I know Larry Pesci just last week during uh, Hackfest did a workshop on IoT pen testing in a firm where, I mean, especially with people working from home now and all the different things that are connected to our home network and the lack of separation between our our children and, and other people in the house that are working from home or going to school or guests and things like that and your work environment, like that's pretty lacking in most people's households. And all these things plugged in, like right now, a friend, a friend bought me a um, Bitcoin ticker. Like I joked on Twitter the other day, I just need Bitcoin now, but it's a really cool ticker that's connected to the internet. You know, I'm like, I have to connect this thing to my Wi-Fi so it can get the price in real time. Like I'm sure it's run, I haven't looked at it yet, but I don't even wanna know what operating system it's running. But all these things at home, I mean, IoT pen testing is huge and supply chain stuff. Uh, 446 by Monta Elkins is another really cool one on the bottom, which is going to be focused on hardware assisted hacking. We've never really had a good course that focused specifically on that for five or six days. So like those are all specialized things and that's why they're in that bucket. 
And then red teaming, I've been working closely with folks like uh, George Ruchias, who works over at Scythe and uh, has done an amazing job working with us on developing our, our red team subcurriculum. And we've got folks like Jeff McJunkin, and we've got uh, David Mayer, and we've got um, Matt Hussein and others helping us build that out. Also, uh, a really cool course there, it's not yet written, it's in development right now from Jonathan Ryder, who also teaches 660, is that bottom one there, uh, 670, Red Team Tactics, Offensive uh, Windows Tool Development. He's worked a lot in the defense environment, the Air Force and Lockheed and other places, and just has, has identified a gap that I wouldn't have known about myself, having not worked in those environments, that a lot of, um, a lot of people who are working in the intelligence space or just different spaces, hey Randall, you might want to mute by the way, um, they, uh, they, they, have, they may have Linux tool development skills when they're doing red teaming or offensive type operations for the more literal definition. Um, they, they might have skills in the Linux side, but a lot of them do not have skills on the Windows side. And we put this under red teaming because the ability to write tools with all the things getting caught by the different Microsoft applications and other third-party applications doing security monitoring, it's, it's hard to just use some tool created by a vendor and just have it work all the time. It gets caught, which may be fine if you're just doing testing of your, your controls, and your response, but if you actually want to fly under the radar and go undetected and see how far you can get, the ability to be able to write your own tools and implants and things like that uh, becomes very important, critical. So I, I'm really excited about that course as well as the many other ones. We'll have a full six day red team operations one coming out. On the purple teaming side, that's really its own bucket too. Um, that one, I'm sure some of you have heard me say it before, but uh, given, what, I've been teaching for SANS for well over 10 years and always in the offensive space, or for the most part, some cyber defense stuff, but I would always ask the class, how many of you in this room of 30 people are pen testers? Because this is a pen testing course. And only like a quarter to a third of the hands would go up. And I was always surprised by that. And I would say, well, what, what are you, what are the others doing? And they were all working in cyber defense in one way, shape or form. And it makes perfect sense. You, the offense informs the defense, you come and get that training because you don't have the time as a defender as much time to keep up with all the cutting edge techniques. So taking a little bit of a shortcut and getting that knowledge makes absolute sense. But the problem is in those pen test courses, though we may mention it, we really don't spend too much time focusing on how to harden things and prevent the attackers from being able to use those tools and techniques. And so, uh, I got together with Eric Van Bugen out at Inviso and we put together 599 and then 699 afterwards. And it's a really neat course or really neat courses on bringing the red and the blue together. It's not a new team. You don't hire new purple people. You have the red and the blue sides working together because we're both trying to solve the same problems and we're both trying to achieve the same goal, which is securing the organization. Uh, so, or typically anyway, right? But, but we may be reporting to different hierarchies and things like that. So opening up the communication and working on specific things, like let's focus on this one area. Let's talk about how you would attack it. Let's talk about how we need to defend it. Let's look for ways to get around it and modify it to see if there's still space to get in. And then, you know, we can prepare for our red team. We still do red teaming and all, but the having the offense and the defense work together is really going to uh, better prepare us for when the red team exercise does come in. So purple is just, it's a fascinating area. And I think that really the, the today and the future of what was, I just focus on offense or I just focus on defense really isn't possible anymore. You really need to incorporate both. And then finally, something near and dear to my heart is exploit development. I've been doing that for many years and I uh, put 660 over there as well, because we do have a couple of days on introductory exploit development on Linux and Windows. But then 760 has been out for a long time. I've been working with uh, Jamie Geiger, who's a new addition to the course as far as authorship uh, to just, it's really fun. It's a really neat area. And I've, we've got some courses kind of in idea mode or development that are gonna help satisfy people who want immersion on one of the areas that we cover in 760. And then we've got a new two day course on ARM exploit writing from John DeGreiter, who you may know from Black Hat and other areas, um, which I'm excited about that one too. So that's kind of um, hopefully explaining why we needed these different buckets and why penetration testing didn't work as an umbrella name anymore because it's a subset now. 
And I want organizations, going back to this bullet for a second here, I want organizations to look at this and say, are we doing all these things? And, and not every organization has to do all these things. The stuff on the far right, maybe things when you're more mature, I don't know. But if you're a medium to large size organization, I've worked at organizations who have well over 200,000 employees, and we were doing all these things, maybe not the exploit development part, but look at organizations like Google and a lot of this security research that's going on at Microsoft and all the different places um, that do get into that area. Product security testing is one example of something that you might do that results in the identification of vulnerabilities, which could potentially be weaponized. Now, whether or not you weaponize them, that's different, but that still gets into exploit development when you're doing vulnerability discovery. Um, you're just not weaponizing it. So again, I want organizations, regardless of the vertical market or whatever, to look at all these different buckets and say, are we doing all of these things? And if not, are we okay with that? Like, that's fine if you identify, we don't need to do this specific thing. We don't have to have our people working at this financial institution writing custom implants. So you can, you know, mark that one off, but just do an assessment on it real quick and make sure that that's, that's what you believe in. And maybe use this as a tool to identify new opportunities of things that you could potentially be doing or add in or be doing better. And this, these are areas that some organizations do all of them. Some of them do many of them. Some of them only do a few of them. So it just depends on what environment you're in. But I wanted this there regardless. I had to put the coin slide in. Um, it's the obligatory coin art slide. We've got a couple of them missing here and some more in development. But these are, of course, the challenge coins that you can win if you win the capture the flag or if you attend like Coin of Blues like we had last week. So the second item here, and these, these last couple won't take as long. I'm not gonna fill up the entire hour by any means, but course selection. I'll just tell you a, a quick story. One time I was teaching a 660, which is the advanced pen testing and exploit writing course. At the time, the course was named Advanced Penetration Testing, Exploits, and Ethical Hacking. So exploits. And I had a student who was very upset when we got to days four and five because we were covering a lot of of exploit development topics. And he, I remember him saying, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I do for my job. This shouldn't be in the course. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, it's it's well-documented in the syllabus, like with all respect, it's it's what it's in there. Did you read the syllabus? And, and he said, no. He said, I took this course because it had the same numbering scheme as 560, which is the course I took before this. And I said, okay, so you only read the course name, maybe the number, hopefully the name, and you're unhappy. So you know, we, we did the right thing and, and made it right by the student. But um, for me, that was like a teaching moment. I was like, okay, I need to be more clear in the course title. So we changed the course title name to Advanced Penetration Testing, comma, Exploit Writing and Ethical Hacking. So now my argument is you at least read the course name, right? We can't get any more clear than that. So again, that was a learning a moment for me and that got me thinking as well we need to make it more clear for potential students and companies who may be sending their employees as to what is in the courses if you want a course with exploit development in it you should be able to easily find that by looking at the bucket the sub curriculum and looking at the available courses and they should be as clear as day succinctly in the title itself like ARM exploit writing, you can't get any more clear than that. So I think that that will be a useful tool to uh, to help people with their course selection. And um, we often get students, like it says in the bullet there, and companies asking which courses contain which topics. And you know, back to that point about 660, I've had enough people say, I really wanted just a little bit of dabbling in exploit writing so that I can go in and modify exploits and and understand how attackers are getting in and which exploit mitigations work, but I don't need to go find zero day. So that's why we kind of leave that into the course. So it's just all about clarity there. And then finally, on the bottom one here, growth, I, I really, back to the original point, I wanted a name that is all encompassing, that serves as an umbrella, and we can have all kinds of different sub curricula and different buckets or whatever categories we want to use. And I, I kind of wrote a marketing line there in the first bullet. I want to have a catalog that covers the entire threat landscape from an offensive perspective. 
So what is the entire threat landscape? These, I put a note on there on the bottom. Don't, don't ask yet as to when we're expecting to have them turned in. There's no ETA on these courses. I really was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to list them. But these are ones I'm at least where I'm at least talking to people or there's been some initial proposal back and forth or there is some initial working though the course is not approved and i'm excited about every one of these and i've got more ideas in my head as well that i'd like to see come to fruition if i can identify the right authors but uh 777 i've got the author it's waska tejeda who works out of dominican republic at f2tc uh, brilliant individual good friend and I, I this is going to happen just to need to figure out when but that's going to get into user land and kernel exploitation on linux realm and that's exciting and a 700 level course 665, I know Matt Toussaint's worked on a proposal and we're actively talking about an advanced red team tactics and threat emulation course. SEC 860, I've been going back and forth with Jamie Geiger and there's a possibility there that we might have a Windows kernel exploitation course that would be multiple days, like five or six days. Uh, Moses Frost, who wrote 588, has enough ideas and content for a three-day course on advanced cloud pen testing, so that could come to fruition. Um, Mac OS penetration testing is something I'd like to see, a post-exploitation living off the land, a product security pen testing, like the idea about a product security pen testing course I would like to see is where we start with a, a, a product, like at one of my roles at a prior organization, every week we'd have different projects to assess, and this could be point of sale systems, it could be ATM machines, it could be a VoIP phone or a tablet or a, uh, a new application like an endpoint protection suite. It could be anything that we, we could be given. One time we got handed to us, well not physically, but sort of a uh, armored vehicle that would go to a bank and pick up money to deliver it back and forth um, and to do an assessment of that. So that's not one I would choose, but we would start with something like, let's choose an antivirus product. Let's choose a network widget, a device, and let's approach it as if we're looking for zero days. We're trying to help our organization decide as to whether or not we should put this device onto our network. So that would be another idea. But the, again, these are ones that are potentially happening. So this is the uh, surprise when I wanted to introduce. I made a promise not to do a certain thing and I'm not doing that. So I'm doing this at least. And this is the one slide PowerPoint would not stop trying to I guess it was like your slide deck is terrible. I have some better ideas for you. And this was the one idea it tried to recommend. I was like, yeah, it looks kind of cool. Okay, PowerPoint, if you'll stop bugging me, I'll, I'll, I'll do this one. So that's the 760 coin on the top left, which is one of my favorites. And obviously the offensive operations logo down at the bottom. Get to the point, right? The question is, will there be a certification for SEC 760? I have been asked this more times than I can count rightfully so and it makes me very happy that people want a certification for this my requirement for a certification for 760 has always been it needs to be a hundred percent practical with a low passing rate not because we're mean but because i always think back to the ccie exam from cisco and how that was unobtainable at the time like when i was younger and i was like man this that's that's just i've heard horror stories but it's two days at the time before it changed of grueling experience where they tear apart your network after day one and you've got to come back in on day two and fix everything and um 100 practical after you take the written kind of prereq exam and we got the gse exam which is really cool but this one's specific to exploit development i wanted it to be a cert where if google project zero or microsoft or you know one of these organizations who wants to know that you absolutely can do such an advanced topic area or a role such as windows kernel exploitation or user land export whatever that they could be confident in the those who pass this exam so i'm not saying that we're doing an announcement that it's um that it's coming on a specific date and all that just know that progress has been made i've been working with Jamie Geiger who thankfully again i've been trying to bring this to light for many many years now and it's just a whole suite of challenges as to what makes it complicated. And Jamie took on the lead role of uh, writing the, the meat of, of this. And again, very practical that will prove that you've got not just ring three, but ring zero exploit writing skills. Um, so more on that in the future. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore today, 
but the next you'll hear about it if if we can finish making it happen is uh, an official announcement from GIAC. But again, we have to wait for that. So free course giveaway says here, free course giveaway. So I, I was going through an old presentation and that honey badger there on the right. I did a presentation in Berlin one time and uh, I, I made, the, it was like a lot of people were signing up and I thought it, people were coming because we were giving away free beer. So it said, ich kampf with das Freibier. And um, here, I don't even know if that's how you say free course. I, I tried, I knew a little bit of German, but uh, just figured put something funny there. So it's time to give away the free course. Here are the rules. You must be currently present to win. My apologies if some people weren't able to get in due to some limitations. This one became more popular than I thought we expected. Uh, just a, a curriculum announcement to be, and it's probably because of free course. Um, I'm going to use the Python rand range function, not rand int because I'm not insane, but the rand range function to choose a number, and that will correspond to a spreadsheet that Randall, who you heard from earlier, uh, has in his possession. So when I say the number, he's going to tell me the total. And um, when I say the number, uh, he'll we'll, we'll see what happens. And you'll be the winner. And he will tell us. You may choose if you do win any course in the offensive operations curriculum that you saw prior. Um, it doesn't include the GIAC cert attempt. I, it was very generous of Sans to give this to us as a giveaway for this presentation. If you choose 760, I just pointed this out, that comes with an IDA license in the course, but it's extra money that it's incorporated into the price, but we can't just get them to give that portion away. So you'll need to have your own IDA Pro license if you wanna be able to take full advantage of 760, if that's what you in fact select. So Randall, um, are we are we ready to do this? Are we good? Oh, we are indeed. I just wanna say real quick, we are having some really, really great questions submitted here. So uh, I'm gonna get through the course giveaway just cause I know that's what most people are <laughs> probably here for, but we'll spend some time going through some questions cause there's some really cool stuff in there. So. I will say that we did end up, and you're right, Steve, we had people bouncing in and bouncing out. Uh, we ended up with 1,029, 1,029. 1,029, okay, well, let's just do that then. I think random's already loaded, so I was just messing with it before to make sure it works. All right, sorry, one more time, 1,000 what? 29? 1,029, 1,029. All right. 6.20 would be the winner. Oh, well, give me a moment to scroll through here. And who we got? Kyle Gonzalez. Kyle Gonzalez. You All are right. uh, at a, uh, yeah, we will, uh, Kyle, if you could, hopefully, let's make sure there's not another Kyle Gonzalez on here. How about we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure before I start spouting off uh, Email addresses. Yes, that is Kyle Gonzalez. You are online. Please uh, message me. Uh, email's fine. I'll deal with it if you guys want to send me email. It's rjones at sans.org. That is Randall R. Jones, J O N E S, at sans.org. Email me and uh, we'll get you set up with your offensive operations course. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. And I, I see the numbers dropping down already because that's over. But uh, questions, we can go through a few questions. Uh, Randall, if you want to read them off or. Absolutely. Uh, the first one is um, about, is there any, any going to be anything like the lethal forensicator for offensive operations? We have the uh, Lord of the Rings coin. I thought you might touch on that. Oh, yeah, we do have the course. Um, Ed started this idea years ago, and 660 and 760 are part of it, where if you collect, is it a total, I can't remember, is it five or six coins? Do you remember, Randall, how many do you need? It is eight. Eight, <laughs> eight coins, so no problem there. <laughs> If you collect eight coins uh, from the offensive operations curriculum, you win this one coin to rule them all, Lord of the Rings themed coin. And we do have that as kind of a capstone coin. I know it's a difficult one to reach, but we do have the coin of Palooza opportunities and things like that to, to get the coins as well. Uh, we had one question that was about um, a lack of advanced classes in Sec DevOps frameworks. I don't know if that's anything that maybe you can speak to, probably not really. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely something Frank Kim, who runs the formerly dev curriculum, which is now the cloud curriculum, is definitely putting a ton of, doing a ton of great things and putting a lot of thought into that. So I would, I would definitely tweet at them or, um, or maybe, I don't know, Randall, if you have a different uh, address that they can use to get more information. But yeah, I, I think we'll see some more advanced content out of that space. But yeah, me personally, I don't know. 
There is a, if you look up SANS cloud security, there is a new SANS cloud security page that you can go to for more information and connect with them uh, either through Twitter or directly. Uh, I also want to say there was a lot of comments in here about the information on the webcast and thanking you, Steve, for the information and also taking this direction. So thank you very much for your feedback. I know I've been deleting questions because there's quite a few, but that's uh, we do very much appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I had one. Uh, how much of an impact do you see AI or deep learning making a difference in offensive operations? Yeah, that's a good question too. I had one author who, or potential author, who wanted to write an adversarial mach machine learning course, which I, I thought was going to be really neat. I thought definitely a bit niche, at least for now, but it's good to be ahead of the curve on things that are coming out in the future. But I, I think I'd, I'd like to see that. I'm not sure as far as how much the average organization will be using that as part of their daily routine, but I definitely see in my head, certain organizations and agencies, I'll say that, um, utilizing that technology uh, within their offensive space, yeah. Uh, and since you touched on uh, 760, will there ever be a GX cert for SEC 642, Advanced Web App Penetration Testing? Uh, 642, uh, yeah, I know that, so we've got GIAC is the governing kind of certification body associated with SANS that writes all of our exams and is responsible for them. And one of the problems we run into is with so many curricula coming out and trying to identify gaps and coming out with these great courses is getting these certifications to market, especially when you're dealing with things like ANSI accreditation and all, and putting in the quality that needs to be there is, is not quick. And so I know it's definitely on the list. I just don't know where it stands with regards to uh, the order on that list. But yeah, hopefully someday we're gonna keep pushing now for it. With 760, we kinda are looking at doing a lot of the, the work and footing the work for that. Uh, I'm gonna try and isolate some of the questions that are about courses in development. Uh, the uh, 446, 446 hardware assisted hack, hacking, uh, do you see challenges giving the full experience of the class if SANS is remaining in distance or virtual learning in SANS Live Online? Yeah, that's a great question. And first off, I hope I hope after vaccine comes out next month, we'll see, and, and throughout until next summer, I would imagine, before it gets distributed to the majority of people, I hope anyway, that maybe later next year we can start getting back to some sense of normal. But um, Barring that, because we don't know what's going to happen there. We want to do it when it's safe, of course, only. Um, Monta Elkins has been amazing. At, first off, he showed me a picture of his lab, and I was very impressed. Like, you think of going to where you take your car in to get work done on it um, at the dealership. That looks like his office space, but for hardware hacking. So it's really neat, all these little drawers of all the things. And so he put a lot of thought into the suppliers for the type of equipment needed to get out to all the students. So one is about being able to ensure that we can continuously get the devices needed for students to have a good consistent experience. And the other one is how do we make sure that the students get the same experience? And so we're working with our team internally at SANS who does all the recording. You may have seen him if you come to a SANS event, um, recording instructors who are speaking in the front and such. And we've got these, we're, we're looking into this special camera type situation where it'll be zoomed in, hopefully he'll get his fingers with hands manicured, but uh, zoomed in on his hands and fingers while he's narrating and putting things together where on the screen, it's gonna be up close and personal and, and high depth. And I think that that's gonna help ensure that you get that same level of experience, if not even better, uh, because you can watch it and watch it and watch it when you miss something. I remember Mick Douglas did a presentation at Network Security Conference last year at Caesars Palace, and that was one of the challenges. Like we used a document cam, and he was showing things, and it was being presented on the screens. But then you go around to assist students, and students are saying, "Well, how do I do that part again?" Because you were going too quickly. Well, with having that recorded, you could just go back and back and back again. So I think we're, we've, we're gonna, it's going to be good. Uh, is the, um, well, is the focus moving forward on two or three days specialized courses instead of six days? That's, that's a good question as well. I mean, I, I don't think that long courses are for everyone and we've been doing that for a very long time and, and, and they're great if you can get that full immersion. Um, and, and that's one of the great things about on demand as well. You can kind of slow things down to your own pace and rewatch things. But I think that 
we're doing a better job at coming up with and identifying gaps where it's if it's more of a niche focus like for example i one of my ideas is which is not novel by any means but if we have two days of exploit development in 660 which is introductory exploit dev then let's maybe carve that out if that's all that somebody wants maybe they want that as a precursor to going and taking 760 so they feel more confident about taking that Something like ARM exploitation makes sense to start with the two-day course and see how it goes. Same thing with the blo blockchain implementation and smart contract security. Let's see how a three-day course goes. And then we've also got the two-day red teaming class, and then we're going to make a longer one. So I think that you'll continue to see where it makes sense, shorter focused versions of things for someone who wants a specific topic area. Um, maybe doesn't have time or doesn't need the full length one. It's just difficult to carve out what exactly people would want. So we're still working on that. You know, if you have like what 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 we've looked at and in some way, shape or form may make sense at some point is like pretend that we modularized everything. And there are some companies out there who have done this. It's not very cohesive. If you leave it up to, you know, one of the things that we do is offer students the having spent the time working with experts in the space to put together a a syllabus in such a way where it's cohesive and we we are confident that you're going to get everything you need to know from this as where if you piece things together and you let somebody just say oh i want that and i want this and i want that uh you're going to lack a lot of the you're going to miss out on a lot of the glue that you need to make sure it's cohesive so though we may do some of that where it makes sense you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so uh, 556 IoT pen testing, is that focused on devices that have MMUs run Linux? Will it focus on MCUs, devices that run RTOSs? Uh, historically, a whole lot harder to analyze and test. Yeah, that that is a good question. And that's a question I know that, you know, I went through with Larry and with James this the proposal and some of the things like the software defined radio sections and all the other areas, um, some of that's in 617, but it's an important part, of course, of an IoT class as well. And some of those things you just said, yes, maybe not all. I think the, the best thing to do would maybe um, just at Larry Pesci or James Light Vidal on Twitter, you can, you can, they can yell at me later, but if you at them uh, on Twitter and ask them some of those questions, they can get that information back until we get the far enough along to where the course syllabus is ready to be posted because a lot of times we come out with a proposal and then what was in the proposal is a live document it changes a bit as we go through it um, but i think that that's a good start and then later on we'll get the we'll get the the syllabus up posted and, and that will answer the question but i don't want to say anything that's incorrect though so uh, I'll add on to that because there were a couple questions about what is the timeline for 556 IoT penetration testing what, what is my timeline or what's realistic with the office? <laughs> let's, let's stick with realistic for these guys. <laughs> so I, I'd say Q2 2021. Q2 2021. Okay. And then and, you know, the uh, beta com comes out shortly after that. And the great thing about the beta courses at SANS is they're half price, which is definitely more affordable. Uh, is there um, hmm, is there prerequisites for uh, SEC 661? Uh, is taking 660 going to enable someone to go into 661? Yeah, that's a good question. So I talked to John about this, and that was the exact question, or one of the things we talked about, which is I want people who, it's at, it's at a 600 level, first of all, which means that you can expect things like stack overflows and getting around exploit mitigations like ASLR and DEP and those types of same things that we do in x86, x64, but from the ARM perspective. And one of the questions is, a lot of the people who might go into that aren't going to have the background in ARM assembly. So yes, the, the prerequisite modules will be in there and then we'll be going through uh, CVEs, like real CVEs of with vulnerabilities and working from the start to the finish and getting code execution. So yeah, I, I feel comfortable at this point saying that you could go straight from 660 into that as long as you're feel good about 660 like a lot of, a lot of for a lot of people days four and five and the exploit dev is can be hard on them and um once you feel comfortable with that then yes uh and i'm not sure if they joined late but their question looks like maybe they just missed it is there a course regarding the use of blockchain and making cybersecurity more resilient <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yes, the uh, <laughs> blockchain implementation and smart contract security course is a SEC 554. It's a three day course and it's already posted. If Randall, if you can put that into the chat, we can put the link in the chat and you can click on it and take a look at the syllabus. And that one goes beta in February. So that's a three day course. It'll be 50% off for beta one in February with Stephen Marble. And uh, yeah, it's cool. Like his company, Holborn, I think they might be one of the only, if not the only, pen test company focused specifically on that. And anytime I have a cryptocurrency question or whatever, I, I always go to him. So it, that's that's going to be a neat one. Uh, I think that I got to most of the core awesome. specific questions. Here's one. Um, if I have passed the OSCP and or the ECPPT, and now I want to take a SANS course, should I start with 560? Or uh, having passed those certifications, uh, are they ready to go straight into 660? I mean, this is subjective, depending on who you ask, of course, but I think of the OSCP being more closely related to the GPEN exam, the 560 exam in certain course. Um, I would say if you have the OSCP, you're probably in a good position to take 660. There might be a little bit of overlap here and there, but not too much. Um, but yeah, I, I'd see that being more on the same page as 560. Uh, we did have another question about uh, a uh, SEC 699 um, Advanced Purple Team certification. It, it, that's the same answer as with 642. We are bugging Jack all the time about it, but they only have so many resources. And like I said, we have to make sure the quality is there and where the accreditation, where the accreditation matters or is possible. We have to make sure that that's in place as well as maintaining the quality on all the existing certifications and so it's something that i think will happen i just don't know exactly when it will happen that's a good question uh what is the dif differentiating factor between courses that have an exam certification associated with them and those that don't um Honestly, it's historically the longer courses, like five and six day courses are the ones that get certifications from GIAC. I don't know if we have any courses that are two days um, that have a corresponding GIAC certification. So I think from the student perspective and from the employer perspective, it's, hey, if we're gonna invest money in you to go take training, we want there to be some capstone kind of accolade for you to get once you're done. and that's meaningful um, and it is meaningful, but not all the courses have them. And some people will say, well, I, I, my employer won't pay for me to take a course unless there's a certification available. And that's unfortunate. I have heard that many times. And the goal is to get certs for all the courses. It's just, we, I, I believe we focus primarily on the ones that have the biggest demand. So if it's a, a niche course that I think is really cool, like 860, um, you know, that's not going to be on the top of their list of priorities. Um, okay, so this is kind of a general question, but probably good to answer for folks on here. Is cloud penetration testing a common type of uh, penetration, penetration testing done by companies? Yes, so it's definitely a service offering that I hear of a lot more companies who are uh, pen tests or red teaming kind of consulting companies that, that they are offering. Uh, it's I see it more as it's an extension. Of, it's just it's what's happening, right? It's what's already happened. It's happened even more now with COVID and the rush to work from home and, and telecommuting. So we're already all in the cloud, at least in some way, shape or form. And so it's it's something that you should know how, if you're gonna be a pen tester, a network pen tester, web app pen tester, that should be part of your skill set. It's just, there's Amazon and there's Azure and there's Google Cloud and, and a bunch of other ones as well. And it's a lot, it's a huge space. And when you get into things like container-based security and provisioning software, um, it's it's just a lot of information. It's, it's not something that can be covered uh, enough in another pen testing course. Now, another pen testing course may touch on cloud a little bit, but really it's something that requires its own focus for sure. Uh, which leads nicely into companies uh, uh, having cloud penetration testing services or looking for people. <laughs> uh, will there be a certification for 588 cloud penetration testing? Yeah, the, it, it just got announced. When is it? Do you know when it starts, Randall? Uh, this, it's going to pre sell December 13th. December 13th. Okay, well, you could answer that question, Randall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, true. Yeah, so that we're, that one's there. It's done. It's coming out very soon. Like Randall just said, I'll be pre-sale in December. So yes, I'm happy about that. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, do you know if the offensive operations curriculum will receive greater representation in uh, the SANS Technology Institute uh, to qualify for GI Bill benefits? So I think, is there, will offensive operations be expanding into STI and also, you know, how that ties into benefits or using some of the programs there? So I can't, I can't speak for STI. I do work with the folks in STI, like Randall mentioned earlier, there's a new purple team graduate certificate and I was part of the syllabus for that, and we're hoping to get, when 699 gets a cert, um, we definitely wanna make 699 one of the optional you know, electives. Uh, 599's already in there, and a couple other, few other courses. So I think that absolutely we will be working together and we'll be pushing from the SANS curriculum side to, uh, to do that and come up with maybe even more certificates. And I, as far as like the GI Bill and such, I'm not the right person to answer that question, but from my perspective, yeah, we're going to do everything we can. And Randall, you're going to help me with that uh, to, to elaborate on those things. Yep. Uh, I think this is a good one too. Is there a recommended path into offensive operations for a defender with a security admin background who's wanting to cross over into offensive operations? Yeah, so that's that's a good question too, because everyone comes from different, different backgrounds and, um, and skill sets. Most of us wear many hats, which is it depends really what you're looking to do. If you're looking to just kind of get your feet wet and get introduced to the world, I mean, honestly, the, the purple teaming side's a good one to start with because you you get what you're comfortable with, which is the defensive side of things and how to how to fix the problems that are exploited and the vulnerabilities that are exploited by the adversaries and by the pen testers and the red teamers. So that one may feel a little bit more comfortable. You can build on your de your defensive skills by learning about the offenses. So that's, that's a good one. We always push, of course, 504, which is a great introduction into the world of hacking techniques and covering a bit of incident response. Uh, you know, 560 is a great one for introductory kind of uh, penetration testing, the things you need to know to get started in it. And Tim Medin has been doing amazing things with uh, evolving that course as well. So, yeah. Um. Let's see, does the CEH hold any foundational value before the pursuit of an offensive operations cybersecurity career? I guess I would extend that to an offensive operations certification. Um, so is, is the question around how does it compare or if you have the CEH, does that mean you, where would you start in the... I think I mean, it's saying foundational. So is it a, a value to have CEH before you start jumping into other certifications or getting into a career uh, altogether? Or is, does it really not have much foundational value because there's other certifications or training that you could do that's equal? I mean, there, there's a lot, there are a lot of certifications out there and there's a reason why I'm, I'm at SANS and I've been here for a very long time and I'm not going anywhere. Um, I will say that there's, the certifications people get are are meaningful to them and it's very personal and and people are, get prideful in them and it, and understandably you work hard to obtain them so i'm not going to say anything good or bad about other certifications out there but as far as like the ceh in particular and do you need that or like security plus and those types of certs before you come into the courses no i think that um you know courses like a 504 and a 560 and those types that we have at at more of and 460 as well like the more of the i would say the bottom of the pyramid um and by that i mean as you go up things get more technical like 760 of course is going to be more towards the top of the pyramid i think that um we we ours our stuff is comprehensive starting from the beginning upwards so really that doesn't kind of factor into any decision you should make before coming into a SANS course. It's more about choosing the right one to start with. Okay, I think I'm gonna wind up with our three questions here because we're starting to get a lot that's more like chat than questions in the window <laughs> here. Uh, so we did, I did see a few questions about the Gray Hat Hacker Books um, and uh, an update, future plans, where it's at. Oh, so um, yeah, with the sixth edition, we're gonna start writing it in. And, and for giving away a couple copies, I'm gonna do that on Twitter. So if you pay attention on Twitter over the next few days, I'll definitely figure out a way to do that. Um, but uh, for the sixth edition, that's it's an interesting book. It's the fact that it's going into its sixth edition in hard copy and physical form is it's pretty, pretty neat. 
and Alan Harper is one of the original authors um, who started that with, with Sean Harris and some other folks. And I came in on the fourth edition and I did the fifth edition as well. And now I'm going to be doing the sixth edition as well. And I brought on or we brought on a couple of uh, new authors because, you know, authors come and go depending on what topic areas you want to cover or where they're at with their career and timing. So we've got um, Wasco Tejeda, uh, who is going to be doing the kernel uh, advanced heap exploitation section and the kernel exploitation section and I think a module on uh, chapter on Ghidra and then we've got another new author Moses who is our cloud pen testing uh, author and instructor who's going to be bringing some new content in there as well we've also got some great new authors bringing stuff like a uh, hypervisor security and there's that one of the great things about that book and that series is we always try to keep it fresh with a lot of new cutting edge material. So we're intentionally not starting writing until 2021. So we get more recent CVEs and stuff like that to work through. So excited about that one. I think it'll come out probably in early 2022 because it takes a while to go through the copy edit and stuff. Uh, I missed this one before about the courses in development. Any, uh, any timeline on the Mac OS penetration testing course? Yeah, that, that was on the list where I said, don't ask me because I don't, I don't have one. Um, talking to some people right now, but I need, you, as you can imagine, it's hard to find the talent who we consider to be not only the speak as an, as a, an of, a, officially, you know, um, given their background on a given topic, but also to find someone who has the time and interest into authoring and the capability authoring is not easy it's painful <laughs> and um it's tough so i'm talking to a couple people and i'm hopeful but that's really i don't have a timeline i mean i would love to say by the end of 2021 and that's what i'll aim for but we'll see and um kind of combining two questions here but um it was, uh, one was, uh, are there plans for uh, an even further advanced purple teaming course? So I don't know, 799. And uh, also just about advanced courses in parallel with, sev sec uh, excuse me, with 760. Um, we'll start with the first one. So 599 and 699, you know, historically SANS has had the tier kind of numbering system, never been officially stated, I believe, but like, 500 level, 600 level, 700 level, as you go up, the courses get more technical. And that's all subjective and relative as well, given your background and your own personal opinions on what is advanced, what is technical. But uh, 699, I would say, is more red oriented, more offensive oriented than 599, which is more defensive oriented. I would say something like 70, 30 or 60, 40 on the offense to a defense side depending which one we're talking about. So the 699 is more red, more offensive oriented. And I, you know, I maybe Eric from Booking Outs listening, I don't know, but um, I will definitely relay that to him that there is some interest. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback as far as like, is there something missing in the course? Is there something you'd like to see uh, that I'd love to hear about it? And that's what helps us drive building new courses as well. And um, I just don't know what would be in a seven, 99 advanced super advanced uh, purple teaming class i think that the goal with 699 was to get more into the adversary emulation and building the adversary emulation pipeline making sure that your your controls are set up in such a way where you will detect when red team exercises are running or when it's not a red team and it's an adversary that that ends up on your sock dashboard and you know how to respond initially to it and triage like it really getting the teams to work together on from that perspective. But um, yeah, definitely send us your ideas. I see Eric is listening and surprisingly he didn't drop off. So <laughs> he must be he must be game. I say we plan it. 799, here it comes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll stop. I think we'll stop there because um well, there was uh, the other half you said I just want to make sure you hit that one. Say that again? There was the other half of that question that I said that I didn't get to. What was it? No, you covered it. It was just about advanced courses. I mean, well, I guess you did uh, elaborate. Advanced courses along the lines of seven, uh, 760. So you oh. started at the tiered courses. Yeah, I mean, as we see the demand, we will build the courses. Um, I'm definitely more of the, uh, I like advanced material. I, I like living in the world of debuggers and reverse engineering. And so I think all courses should be like that. But um, as we see the demand go up, we'll definitely build it and we'll try to get ahead of the curve a bit there, but yeah. 
So I we... just wanted to reiterate, we had questions still coming in. The slides will be made available with the recording of the video. So it will be in uh, your SANS account or on the registration page. So SANS account under my webcast. Uh, we very much appreciate your time and uh, thank you very much. Thanks.